My name is Tishan, this is Brian, Harmon and Thomas. And today we're going to show you how to solve Pascal's problem of points and also generalize it. Okay. So Pascal and Fermat are playing heads and tails. So Pascal is winning 8 to 7 and they've both put in 50 gold coins into the plot. So whoever wins out of 10, first to 10, gets the 100 gold coins. Suddenly, Fermat has to leave the game. So Pascal and Fermat are left with the problem of splitting the coins evenly. And Harmon will show how they've done it. Okay. Right, um, so the way they had to do it is they had to be the first person to 10. And F Pascal has eight points, Fermat has seven points. So Fermat needs three points to win and Pascal needs two points to win. And because it's the first person to 10, that's the same thing as being best out of 19. So that means that well, eight plus seven is 15, 19 minus 15 is four. So it's the maximum amount of four moves um, for someone to win, just anyone, doesn't really matter. And this 2D diagram shows all the possible outcomes of that happening and the probabilities of those outcomes. And well, for Person A to win, which in this case is Pascal, they need two points. So if they win one, they just need to win another one. If they win one, lose one, they need to win another one. And person B is Fermat, so they need three more points to win, which, yeah, three Bs equals one win. And so when you, if person A wins, then if person A wins twice, that's the probability. If person A loses, then you go again, so from B up or down, if, a, if person A wins or person B wins. And if you add up all the probabilities, uh, Pascal, which is person A, has a probability of winning of 11 sixteenths, and Fermat has a probability of 5 sixteenths, so that's the way you split the money out of 100. I'm going to explain, once you've done this, so for every problem, because you don't want to draw out this massive tree diagram, especially if there's lots more outcomes or lots more games that they have to play so they were playing to 20. So we found a way of finding out the answer using Pascal's triangle. This is Pascal's triangle. So as we knew before, one person, which was, so Pascal had two points to win and his opponent had three points to win. So as we found out by Harmon explaining that there was a possible maximum amount of flips, which was four left, we have to go to row four of the triangle and make sure that you know that the first row, which is just one of them, is row zero. So we go to this fourth row here, and as one person had two to win, and one person had three to win, you split the row, three parts on one side, and two parts on the other side. So when you've got this, you add up both the sides individually, so six, four, and one is 11, and four and one is five. And you put this over the whole sum of the row, which is 16. So one side is 11 over 16, the other side is 5 over 16, and this is how you split the money. Obviously, the person who's got the most points at the moment, which is Pascal, will get 11 sixteenths of the money, and his opponent will get 5 sixteenths of the money, and that's how you split the 100 gold coins that they put in. To show that this works with other problems, you can use examples where they're not just playing best of 19, but best of, say, 29, where they're both trying to get 15. For example, say person A was on 12 points, and person B was on 10 points, then you'd work out that you'd have to get to row seven here. You'd then split it three to five, so straight here. So you can see that you've got 28 plus one, so 29 over, it's 29 over 17, 19, 19, 19, 19, 99. Okay, so it'd be 29 over 99 and 70 over 99. I'm not very good at mental maths. These are geniuses. So you can see that it would work with any number of goals left and however many turns will be played in total anyway. So you could do it where you have 100 goals left or where you have just three goals left. And you could do it all using this triangle or an extended version if you have more goals needed. Thank you for watching.